And I thought I'll show you the bottom side of this. I tipped it upside down and show you the, the silicone I put in there and just smoothed it out with my finger real smooth around there. Maybe a little better picture of the grate. It's upside down, of course. But anyway, I'll show you the setup I got out here and kind of go over a few things before I put it together. Uh, okay, a little scooper. I'm going to use that because when I shake some of my coals out, I get some coals down there that I think I can reuse. They're pretty good size. I don't know if you can see down in there. But I'm going to scoop some of that bigger stuff up. And while I'm looking here, I've got kind of a cyclone type idea that I put in on this is where the gas goes out and then into my other cyclone. I'll get into that in a sec, but when I put the reactor down in there, this tube fits the inside circle of that. So my idea was to draw from the inside of that to get a swirl on the gas to help Lee hopefully drop the ash out a little bit more before it gets sucked into this second second one which I'll show you now highly recommend you put a valve in when you want to shut this down that, that's awesome uh, you shut your air intake off shut that off and what I do and is when I get ready to shut down I'll I'll make sure it has enough wood in there and it's just starting to turn into charcoal and then I'll shut it down and then it'll be ready to light the next time because it'll all be loaded with charcoal so here's the cyclone that I build out of a Freon tank and it drops down into a propane tank and I put a valve here and one here to drain so I can shut this valve and drain without shutting the system down if I need to do that while it's running so far I haven't had to do it so the gas comes out the top this tube here goes all the way down to about two inches to the bottom of that this tube goes up through this stainless steel tube that I got at a recycling place into this radiator that I built. Boy, was that a project. It's about four feet high and about 30 inches wide. So the gas comes in through the top here and I've got a tube inside of here that goes clear to the end with holes drilled in it that comes out right here. So it will spread the gas throughout the radiator and then this plug here is to open up and run a brush through that, a pipe cleaner brush to clean out those holes if I have to. So the gas comes down out the bottom into this tube. Now let me backtrack a little bit. And when it goes through, when the gas goes through this radiator, it condenses all the moisture out that's in in there. Well, I'll bet there's some here. Let's see. Maybe I already drained it, I don't remember. There we go. Nasty. So all that water was out of probably no more than two coffee cans of wood, wood chips. All right. So the gas comes out there through this uh, high temperature hose that uh, goes for hot tubs and stuff like that. I got the hardware store and it'll plug right into that right there into a five gallon bucket. And this tube goes has a piece of PVC pipe, goes down to the bottom with an elbow and goes across the bottom of the can with holes drilled in it. And then I've got just a, 
I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's a little bit of water right there that I put in there intentionally, and that's just above the holes in the uh, PVC. So when the gas gets sucked in here, it has to go through them holes and it gets bubbled through the water. So the water is about two inches deep. And then I've got a expanded metal just above that inside. And I got wood chips stacked up on that. You can see the wood chips down in there. And it comes out of there and it goes into this shop vac, well, bucket head from Home Depot, wet dry vac. You just buy the, the head here and it goes on any five gallon bucket. And what I did on this is it still has the filter, the paper filter in it, but it also has wood chips in it. Anyway, I did that. Is inside here, when you take the head off, uh, it's just right for a PVC pipe. I don't know if we can see it in there or not. You see that PVC pipe in there? It's a 90. And it goes down to the bottom of the bucket and across the bottom as well, just like the, the water tank. And then it's got wood chips real loosely packed inside. So whatever gets sucked in goes into the bottom and then goes through some more wood chips through the factory paper filter and out and up to my burn tip. Because this is a vacuum, it, it's got way more velocity than you need, well, than I need to run this gas fire that I built. So I've done two things on this. I went to Harbor Freight and got a basically a, a Variac. It's a router speed control. So you've got, uh, you can turn it on full or variable speed, and I'll show you that when I get it up and running. And you can adjust the speed of the vacuum to full or to low. And I don't know what the RPM, RPM would be, but it's, it's pretty low and it's still more than I need on low. Some of you may be saying you're using a vacuum running flammable gas through it. Well, the motor is sealed from the fan blade, so there's... There's no gas that actually surrounds the motor, it's just the impeller on the, on the vacuum itself. Another thing I did to help restrict the flow because it has plenty, so on the end of this hose, I put a, a reducing bushing in there, and that's a 3 8 no, quarter inch pipe right there. And this is half inch, half to quarter inch reducing bushing. And then I plug that right in there. Some black tape makes a really good seal there. I got some springs to help ensure that that lid stays down. By the time the gas comes out of out of the radiator, there it's ambient temperature, so I have no heat issues anyway coming through here. In fact, when, by the time it gets out to my burn tube, that pipe is colder than ambient temperature it seemed like. And I got this this little lid here that I need to clean it like I showed you before. But you can put that on there, tighten it up and then you can look down and see what may be happening down inside. Just a visual there. Got this all mounted on a what I did is I had an old bed frame I hacked up welded it up, put it mounted everything on. Still need to mount these two right here on the sides, but I moved them off to the side because the barrel gets pretty hot. And it was get getting these hot over here, so that's plastic, so I wanted to stay away from heat on that until I get a shroud around this. Another thing I was going to show you, but I didn't. I put a thermometer in here. 
and I found that to be pretty helpful. And this is just a barbecue poultry uh, gauge that I got that I just had and I drilled a hole in this tank siliconed it with the uh, high temp RTV and I just used it for a reference and it, it came in handy if I don't know if you can see them two black marks when this gauge gets up to that first mark and it's been reliable when it gets that first mark that's exactly when I start getting flammable gas burnable gas out of the burn tube in between this range that's what I get and then when it starts getting up here hotter I start losing my flammable gas so when it does that I choke down my air and just slow things down so it's not running as hot and keep it right in that range I don't know what that temperature is and it's it's probably unique to whatever build you do how your system put together so I just put it in the first time I ran it I kept an eye on it and when I got flammable gas I put a mark on there so I know I know when I'm making flammable gas by the temperature okay now back to my uh, wood chips that I've been experimenting with Here's the charcoal I dumped out of there while I was working on it. And mostly what I started running was these chunks here that I I made. They're about one inch tall or so, and then inch and a half by three quarter, you know, some smaller. And then I went even finer because I was getting bridging with that bigger stuff. So I went a little bit finer and had pretty good luck with that. And this is a lot finer. This is this is actually this stuff here is what I've got in my uh, filters over there. And the way I made that is I got this little Harbor Freight wood chipper here that I, that I made made work for me. I took and revamped the the uh, blades in there to make me the chip size a little bit bigger. I reworked it a little bit because this is what it usually that's what comes out of that chipper normally. I revamped it and now I get this size out of it instead of this size. I get more more of this size and I just. I just ran these through my chipper to get those but this is what it normally put out so I reworked that chipper a little bit all right I'm gonna start putting it together and if, if I see anything I'll pause back in and if I get ready to light it I'll pause back in then okay see you in a minute 